Hi, I'm Marie Hopkinson. I'm a Chinese medicine practitioner and today we're going to be talking about what if I was born with only one kidney? How does that affect my gene? Um, that's a subscriber's question that we're going to um, answer. Now that leads us to a much bigger question um, or much, much bigger discussion about Chinese medicine that I would love to have on this channel. So we, let's get right into it now. So I'm going to read out the subscriber's question. Um, this is from Sasha and she says, great info. Thanks. Too many ads though. <laughs> One question, how to maximize and build Jing to prepare for pregnancy in a woman born with only one kidney? Any thoughts? Now, this is a really great question. So thank you so much for asking it, Sasha, because um, there's not enough time in every single video to qualify or to like give all the, like not so much a disclaimer, but just all the parameters about Chinese medicine when we start every video. Otherwise, these things would go on for hours and hours. And this is one of the reasons why Chinese medicine takes so long to study because really the first one year of Chinese medicine school for a practitioner is all about these basic fundamental foundations. And this is something that I found really hard to get my head around when I first started learning Chinese medicine. Um, where when we say, oh, you've got liver chi stagnation or you've got um, kidney gene deficiency or you've got some kind of um, like... Uh, heart blood deficiency and so these kind of terminologies are used very frequently in Chinese medicine as the diagnostic patterns or the diagnoses in Chinese medicine now not all practitioners use these diagnoses this is part of what we call the Zheng Fu system of Chinese medicine it's the most popular the most common system of Chinese medicine it's not the system I practice anymore but it's still part of how we understand Chinese medicine certainly what I teach in in um, the stock standard Chinese medicine school, the basic foundations of Chinese medicine is kind of this understanding. And the best way I could probably explain to you as a patient, let's say, or as a, as a student even, um, I'm pretty sure you're probably not a student of Chinese medicine, but um, I'll give you the explanation in a little bit more detail so if you were a student you could understand it as well. So the first thing I'd say is that Chinese medicine uses a lot of metaphors in explaining how it works. And it's, it uses a lot of analogies, so it sort of thinks about how our body lives in harmony with the environment, looking at how the environment lives in harmony with itself, and then looking at how human beings live within that. And the foundations of how we think about that before we think about organs comes from what we call the five elements. So this is wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. So um, wood, it relates to different organs, right? The wood organs, there's yang of the wood and there's yin of the wood. Now, if you're a TCM student, you've already learned about what yin yang is, you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense, Marie. But if you're not, then this can become very complicated very quickly. So I apologize if it's a bit complicated, but I'm going to give you all the information and then we'll try to break it down even further to make it more simple. Um, so every element has a yang and a yin aspect, right? So you have wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. And it doesn't really matter if we're talking about like a, a diagnosis called liver blood deficiency or kidney gene deficiency whether you're born with um, a faulty liver, let's say, or only one kidney, um, it doesn't really matter um, in terms of how things function in Chinese medicine. Now, there are some organ functions in Chinese medicine that are related to the structural organ as well. And there are some organs where if you take those organs out of your body, like you have it removed, you'll die. Like you can't have no heart. <laughs> Everyone knows that, right? Otherwise, you'll, um, you won't just be a heartless, <laughs> a heartless bitch. You'll also be dead. You'll, you need to have a heart. You need to have some kind of a liver. You can't have no liver at all, right? You could have half a liver. You could, um, you could survive on a small amount of your liver, but you still need a liver. You still need liver in your body. Otherwise, you will not function, right? Um, you could have your spleen taken out, but you... But you, your body still does, you know, it's, it still can do its functions. You could have one kidney and your body can still do its functions. It doesn't function as well as if it had two kidneys, but it can still function. So it's not, the, the functions that Chinese medicine attributes to these um, organs are more related to the aspects of the elements, not so much related to the structural element, structural aspects. Um, and so that's the first thing I tell students when they're learning Chinese medicine. I say, look, forget Western medicine for a minute, right? So if you're in first year Chinese medicine school, you're kind of learning all this Western medicine. You're getting, you know, learning all those cells and the biology and the musculoskeletal system and, you know, Krebs cycle and all these things like that. 
and then at, you know that's kind of filling up your head with all okay that's how the body works and that's true we're not saying it's not true but then there's this other system and this is where chinese medicine becomes really unique it's not a system that relies on the knowledge of any other system it actually is encompassing all within itself now there's lots of things where as a practitioner of many years of experience you can kind of look at western medicine and see a chinese medicine analogy with it or see it aligning or see it there's lots of things like that where that is pretty amazing and there's some things that chinese medicine has been explaining and been able to explain for decades and centuries right which western medicine is only coming to the idea of explaining that now one of those organs would be the mesentery right so you might not have even heard of that new organ system like a um uh, we won't go into the details of that because <laughs> that might take too much time in this video but um so the chinese medicine system has been has labeled that as an organ like what we call the san jiao or the triple heater or the triple burner um, this idea of this interconnectedness of your digestive tract with your lungs with your um, you know, perfusing all of your abdominal organs and those kinds of things. This interconnectedness is nothing new to Chinese medicine. There's actually an organ system which kind of looks at that by itself. And that's something new to Western medicine. They've only kind of just discovered the mesentery. You can look that up on Google or whatever um, to kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, so um, what we're talking about is this metaphorical system of the five elements. So you have wood, fire, earth, metal, water. Now the kidneys, because this person's question is related to the kidneys, relates to water. So rather than saying the functions of the kidneys are, like when we were in this video that she was responding to, was talking about have you got Jing, like talking about you're trying to get pregnant, you need to get Jing. Now Jing is, in Chinese medicine, they say it's stored in the kidneys. What does that really mean? Does it mean the physical kidneys? So if you were to cut open the kidneys, can you find the Jing? No, that you can't. Like it's just silly. It's not that. It's not there. Um, it's a it's an idea that the water element itself is storing the yang of your body the functional aspect that spark of life now you could think of this as like the enzyme sparks that kind of do the catalyst for changes in your body like you need this these these kind of sparks for change to happen you can think of that as jing like in jing in this sense is reproductive um, the essence of reproduction so like your your sperm and your eggs and the quality of those things um, relates to that so jing or essence it can also be considered like the yang the kidney yang um, of 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 the kid so every organ has yang and yin kind of aspects it's the functional aspect of being able to reproduce being able to get pregnant um, or you know have healthy sperm or something like that if you're if you're a man and you've got sperm or you've got a female and you've got eggs have you got healthy um, eggs and also then the um, location where those things are going to be stored um, once they're fertilized like the, the uterus is that a healthy location is there enough blood there all the rest of that sort of stuff in one overarching sense the kidney essence or the kidney gene looks after those things right so um, the question was, if I've lost one kidney, do I have less essence, basically? Or how can I get more essence? Well, you don't necessarily have less essence just because you have one physical kidney versus someone who has two physical kidneys. Just the same as if someone has their gallbladder taken out. In Chinese medicine, one of the functions of the gallbladder is decision-making, let's say. Now, does that mean your physical gallbladder is making the decisions? <laughs> no, it doesn't mean that at all. Where are the decisions made? Well, your brain is making the decisions. But in Chinese medicine, there's lots of mental, emotional aspects where they attribute, like the system attributes them to organs, really to elements. It's like, let's say, the wood element, the wood aspect, because the gallbladder is a wood element organ. This is the one I like to talk about the most because so many patients have their gallbladder taken out. They ask me, well, you know, does that does it have any relation to my gallbladder? Like I had a patient today that had some pain in their gallbladder channel like in their, in their hip, in their backside, and that sort of, like a sciatic kind of pain. And she said to me, well, does, would it have any relation to my gallbladder being removed? Like, would that, be, would that have you know, been part of it? And the answer is probably no. Um, and so um, I kind of had this kind of discussion with her about that as well. Um, that 
your you have a one system and this is kind of maybe bringing another thing into it but you do have a different system of channels versus the organs themselves right and so those things are related but you can have a channel problem that's not related to the organs. so let's just stick to this question first and then we'll get to the channel part later on <laughs> um, so the, the idea of these the idea of these functions so the the kidney essence function which relates to reproduction jing the jing function is really a water element function and it would probably be a lot simpler in chinese medicine if they didn't talk about the organs as much and they more talked about the elements right so they could say instead of saying um the liver chi they could say the yang of wood because it's really the yang of wood's function, which again, some people think it's more the gallbladder chi, not the liver chi, that kind of promotes the smooth flow of energy. Now your liver doesn't do that physically. Like were you to cut and look for your liver, like were you to dissect the liver and look for those functions, we can't see that within there, we can't see it. Now, in Chinese medicine, another function of the liver is to say that it stores blood. Right, so that means this idea of filtering, right? Which in Western medicine it does do that. When you lie down flat, in Chinese medicine, there's this idea of everything's going into to your organs, like going to the um, middle of your body and outside, away from the periphery of your body, so that you can um, perfuse the internal organs with blood, and that has like um, a healing aspect to it, right? So when you're sleeping, your body's actually rejuvenating. It's in Chinese medicine we say it's making blood. What does that mean? It's make, not making actual blood, it's making the components within the blood. It's making sure that your blood has enough red blood cells, white blood cells. And part of the liver's job is to filter any toxins that might come into the blood. So if, were you to take too much alcohol, were you to take too many drugs, were you to take pharmaceutical medication that you don't need the byproducts of that in your system anymore, well, your liver's job is to filter that out. And that's why our liver kind of wears out or can get illness happen to it, like cirrhosis or... Um, you know different illnesses that happen to our liver because fatty liver or something like that because of our diet and because of our lifestyle or the drugs that you take might be they prescribed pharmaceutical drugs or be they um, you know, recreational drugs or something like that if those things place too much strain on that liver then that liver's you know under strain and so we can physically see some of these things in a correlation with what Chinese medicine is saying, right? So Chinese medicine would say one of the functions of the liver is to store blood. Within that, it means to make quali the quality of blood that your body needs. And part of making that quality of blood is to filter out the toxins so that there's room to make new blood and also to produce the quality, to produce the, the, the things in the blood. Now, in Chinese medicine, they don't just say only the liver does that. They attribute that also to the spleen. They attribute that also to the heart. You can see that in your in in um, your in the physiology, let's say. So the spleen does do that. The spleen does make blood. And were you to have your spleen taken out, some of those functions of the spleen making blood actually is taken up by the bone marrow, right? Um, and it's really interesting to kind of think. Now, I don't want to get too complicated in this video because it's meant to be for patients or people that are interested in Chinese medicine, not necessarily a scholar of Chinese medicine. Um, Certainly not a scholar. <laughs> I don't think there's any scholars coming onto YouTube to learn Chinese medicine. Um, but I'm just trying to give you this overview so you can, you know, make, hopefully make sense of it yourself. Um, so it would be a lot easier, I think. It would think it would be a lot simpler if we just got rid of these um, organs within the Zhang Fu patterns because we wouldn't get confused. Like, certainly lay people wouldn't get confused. Is it really my, my kidney? Do I have a kidney problem? Like I've told patients before when I practice the Zhang Fu system, um, oh, so you've got kidney chi deficiency or you've got liver blood deficiency. And the person's like, what? Oh, is there something wrong with my kidney? Do I need to, you know, especially when I was, let's say, studying Chinese medicine back in, back in the day, <laughs> back in the student clinic. And my teacher would often say, oh, be careful how you word these things so that the patients don't get alarmed. Make sure you tell them and um, that, you know, that it's not their, there's nothing wrong with their actual kidney. This is your you know, let's say they had a gene deficiency or you felt something on their pulse which indicates the lung or the heart, the kidney, liver or something like that. Um, so these aspects relate just as much to the elements of those organs than the, or, the as well as the, uh, the organs themselves, right? So if we were to say the yang of wood, 
that relates to the gallbladder. The yin of wood relates to the liver, right? So you could just say, well, it's the yin of wood. Anyway, <laughs> it's just a little side thought that I had. Um, so that's one thing to think of, right? So this, there's Chinese medicine is a metaphorical um, system where it really relates much more to the elements and the functions of these elements and how we think about these organ function so to answer your question if you have one kidney is it going to affect your ability to get pregnant probably not very unlikely right now the other side of it is which is this is where chinese medicine gets interesting <laughs> and nicely interesting is that if you have if you have one kidney that this person said they were born with one kidney there's a congenital issue there like why were you born with one kidney did did your did you have a genetic um, now this you don't have to answer this in the comments or anything, but did, did you have like a genetic um, inheritance where you're, you know, that's part of like your genetic code? Was there something that happened in utero that um, you know you didn't, um, your body didn't get formed properly for some reason? Like, or sometimes that things can happen where people, the, you know, the mother takes drugs. Um, you know, this happened with thalidomide babies where they were given prescribed medication that caused deformity or something like that. So, in Chinese medicine. Um, these things, all of these things, relate to the kidneys as well. So were a person to be born with like one eye, let's say, and not the other eye, it's the same reason if they're born with one kidney or not one, or, or um, you know, congenital deformities of the heart, let's say. So a person might have like um, what they would consider a hole in the heart, so the, um, the, the, um, that, that the valve has a, or the, uh, the wall between the two ventricles hasn't closed up properly and then um, there's a little hole there. Those kinds of things, all of those kinds of things, are considered like a congenital deficiency, like, a con like it's inherited, um, at either inherited through, um, you, through your DNA, through your biological you know, inheritance, and that's a gene issue, or um, through something that's happened in um, in utero so you maybe didn't get the nutrients that you needed or the mother had a giant shock or had to give birth in your premature birth or something like that all of those things come back in Chinese medicine to the kidneys and the essence so there's a thing where like let's say you go to a Chinese medicine practitioner and they might say oh look it seems like you've got an essence deficiency or if that's the diagnosis they gave you um, it's almost like well you're always going to be struggling to uh you know maintain optimal health if you if you have an essence deficiency if a person so sometimes these things are like people that never get better people that um you know it might be exacerbated by diet and lifestyle so definitely those things can be made better with diet and lifestyle but they're 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 also equally just made much much worse by diet and lifestyle and this kind of explains as well when we think about gene or essence like why some people can really hammer their bodies and and really notice hardly any diff, like hardly anything wrong from that or detriment from that, and others can hammer their bodies and really like they just yeah they almost kind of can't cope right, or they hardly take any drugs or take any alcohol or something like that, and they have massive detriment. You see other people you like you think like Mick Jagger's a good example. <laughs> like you think well how can you keep going like all the drugs that you've taken <laughs> you should be dead by now. Um, and so there's so many complex issues within a human being, right? So we're all unique. We all have different DNA. We all have different makeup. And that is what in Chinese medicine thinks of as our um, essence, right? And the other thing that, that um, affects our essence is how you were brought up when you were first, like sort of maybe between zero and five years old. Um, and as you're sort of being um, nurtured in, the, in, um, in that... Uh, sort of growth phase of, of being a child um, and we don't really know because there's not much evidence like as in evidence-based research on um, these kind of issues from a Chinese medicine perspective for instance like is mental health a part of that is the like is it so is socialization like the way you're brought up socially is that a, an issue for people so I guess to summarize for this person um, on one hand being born with one kidney isn't affecting your gene. But on the other hand, because you were born like that, not because you lost one kidney from some other reason, it does mean there's probably some congenital issue there. Um, and that could be a gene deficiency. But um, having 
like losing an organ doesn't necessarily take away all of its Chinese medicine functions. It can impact the functions, but it doesn't just take away all of those Chinese medicine functions. So for instance, like another function in Chinese medicine of the kidneys is willpower, right? Having um, zhe, like having, in, that's how the Chinese, the Chinese terminology is zhe, like um, being able to make a decision and stick to the decision, right? The sticking to the decision part is the willpower. Um, being able to power through tough situations, um, sort of, um, you know, we can talk about how the, all the different elements kind of relate to that, that kind of thing in a different video. But um, when someone loses a kidney, they don't just suddenly lose their willpower. Like they still can, some people can have very strong willpower still. Um, and so that tells us like just equally, like I said, with the gallbladder, you have your gallbladder taken out doesn't mean that you suddenly can't make any decisions. Um, you still have the ability to make decisions. So um, it will affect your body in some ways, having one organ less than you should or having different, you know, those kinds of things, but not necessarily in a, in a direct Chinese medicine thing. And something to be, be always aware of is the, the metaphorical nature of Chinese medicine um, and the structural nature of Western medicine. So Western medicine's like, well, what can we see? What does it do? That's how we think about it. Whereas Chinese medicine says, well, these functions are going on and look, decision making is like a wood yang kind of function, so that's going to be a gallbladder function. There's different reasons why it's think thought of like that. Um, whereas, like um, joy, for instance, is an emotion that you feel, right? And how do you feel emotions? Well, it's probably in your mind. Like you can't really feel an emotion unless you're like somewhat conscious, right? So it's got to be in your brain. It's not like you your it's not like your heart actually feels joy. It's not like your liver actually feels anger. But these things are part of Chinese medicine. And interestingly, they're not just part of Chinese medicine culture. These things are part of other cultures too. So you hear that in the Bible, in biblical culture, you hear about joy being associated with the heart, you hear about anger being associated with the liver. Um, you know, I mean in Australian culture we hear about anger being associated with the liver. People my mum used to say as I was growing up, oh, that person's got SOL, right? It means like shit on the liver. <laughs> like that, we didn't know anything about Chinese medicine then. That was just a saying that had sort of been thrown around. Where do these ideas come from? And that's another interesting thing, right? Which kind of gives a backing to Chinese medicine. Like these things have been around for such a long time. Um, and there's some, some merit to that because it's, it's an observational system that should work whether you're observing it as a, a Chinese person in the ancient Han dynasty, or if you're keenly observing, you know, the body and how it works within nature, um, in a European country, without that knowledge of Chinese medicine, like it's the same, it's the same body, it's the same universe, it's the same world. <laughs> um, and so Chinese medicine is a really interesting system, and I hope that you're learning something <laughs> by being on this channel. And, ha and and thank you so much for your comment. Um, it's a really good point that you raise because. Um, like we, we, you have to um, kind of have that idea of separating Chinese medicine and Western medicine out if you're going to have any chance <laughs> of understanding it. And then at some point they can kind of come back and merge in together and think about them together. But I always tell my students, like when they're in first or second year, to keep them separate. Right? If you're a student watching this, it's the best advice I could give you because my teacher told me that and that made sense. It didn't make sense at the time, but it made sense about a year or later after I sort of thought about it and I thought yeah every time you try to mix them up or you know make sense of them together it's just this silly thing to do so keep them separate and understand Chinese medicine within itself understand Western medicine within itself after you've been learning Chinese medicine for about three to five years like if you've been properly studying it in a course maybe after you graduated after two or three years you can start to think about okay Chinese medicine and Western medicine um, maybe a little bit earlier than that if you're a bit smarter <laughs> but um what I'm saying is you need to sit with the system of Chinese medicine for what it is without being influenced by these other things all the time, kind of adding on to that, right? Um, so I hope this video has been useful and helpful to you. If it has, don't forget to click the subscribe button below. I would love to hear your comments and your thoughts. If you've got a question about Chinese medicine, I'd like to answer it. Um, so please pop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it. And I look forward to seeing you again on the next video soon. Um, have a great week. Um,